Hello everyone, welcome to our session today at OSPOCON. Uh, this session is about Presto Today and Beyond, the open source SQL engine for querying data lakes. Um, I'm Dipti Borkar, I'm the co-founder and chief product officer at AHANA, um, also the chairperson of the outreach committee for the Presto Foundation. Um, and with me today presenting is Tim Meehan. Uh, Tim is a software engineer on the Presto team at Facebook and also the chairperson of our technical steering committee for the Presto Foundation. Uh, so thank you for joining us today. Uh, we'll talk about, and uh, we'll start off with an overview of Presto. We'll talk about some of the use cases, and then we'll talk about um, the Presto roadmap uh, that's, uh, that's in plan for the next um, several months. All right, let's get started. So Presto, also known as Presto DB, is the de facto query engine that data platform teams are increasingly using to query their data lakes. Um, there's a couple of reasons that Presto emerged. So Presto was built at Facebook, created at Facebook, um, and it was built as a replacement for the Hive query engine uh, from the Hadoop ecosystem for a few reasons. Um, uh, in general, businesses are getting more data driven. Uh, there's a lot more data that's, that's being generated uh, and hence the need for interactive querying on top of all that data. Uh, Presto is an interactive query engine that is extremely fast, much faster than Hive. Uh, in addition, uh, there is another big technology trend that's driving adoption of Presto, and that is the disaggregation of compute and storage. Uh, the rise of the cloud data lakes, uh, the rise of the um, uh, S3, for example, uh, GCS, um, object stores, um, in addition to on-prem um, uh, file systems like HDFS, uh, is, is further uh, created momentum around these disaggregated query engines that are uh, that can be used for analysis, uh, structured analysis, as well as for uh, semi-structured data uh, within data lakes. Now, Presto is uh, open source, Apache 2.0 licensed, but more importantly, it is hosted under the Presto Foundation that is part of the Linux Foundation. Um, it is a community-driven project. Uh, Facebook donated the um, the the Presto um, opens uh, the code itself uh, to the Linux Foundation, and along with Uber, Twitter, and Alibaba, uh, founded the Presto Foundation. Uh, Ahana and I was a very early member of the foundation, and uh, since then, a lot of other other members have joined as well, uh, including uh, Intel and um, HPE and others. So what is Presto? So Presto is a, a dist distributed SQL engine. Uh, it's ANSI SQL compliant, and it can be used to query both data lakes uh, as well as databases. Uh, it's designed to be interactive. So it's um, uh, it's really not uh, a kind of, uh, it's going beyond the batch oriented approach that Hadoop had, uh, and is, uh, can be used for interactive query, uh, interactive querying, uh, ad hoc querying, if you will, on large amounts of data. Uh, and in addition, it is designed to be a federated engine. That means that it is highly pluggable and um, and has a l bunch of connectors that are available for, so for you to query a range of different data sources. Uh, these can be databases, data lakes, uh, streaming engines, NoSQL uh, databases, um, search engines, and so on. Uh, it uh, is uh, built for petabytes of data. It's running at massive scale at Facebook. Uh, and it is, as I mentioned, uh, open source under the under the Linux Foundation. Uh, here's the, the URL, uh, the, the GitHub uh, uh, repo where uh, it lives. Uh, and so it lives under the PrestoDB uh, repo. So let's take a look at the architecture. So Presto is um, uh, a coordinator worker architecture. So here you see on the top, you have a range of BI tools uh, or you have um, notebooks. Uh, you can run uh, SQL notebooks on top. Uh, you can run uh, data science workloads, uh, analytics workloads, um, and uh, as well as increasingly and slowly uh, transformation, uh, transformation workloads as well. Now, um, Presto itself uh, is, uh, uh, is a, a distributed engine, and so the workers then connect to the, uh, to the data sources underneath to pull the information in, process it um, in memory, uh, and then returns it, uh, this information to the coordinator, which then returns it back to the clients that, um, that are querying it. Uh, the most popular data sources underneath tend to be the data lakes, which is uh, 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 HDFS on-prem as well as S3 in the cloud. You see some GCS as well, but uh, you see a range of connectors here. And so you can query data warehouses like Redshift, um, you know, SQL Server, databases, relational databases, MySQL, Postgres, uh, and others. Streaming engines like Kafka, 
um, Elasticsearch like uh, Elastic and you NoSQL know, databases and so on. Um, uh, and uh, and so there is there are a range of connectors that you can uh, access uh, for where data lives in many different places, but also you can uh, join um, and correlate data across these data sources. So some of the common questions that we actually get are, um, you know, is Presto a database, right? How is it uh, uh, related to Hadoop, and uh, how is it different from a data warehouse? So let's let's talk about some of these. Um, so Presto is a disaggregated query engine. So in some ways, it only um, is the top half of the database. Um, the it does not include the storage engine, which 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 lives uh, is typically outside of it, like S3 or HDFS. Uh, and so you can you know you can consider it um, you know as part of the database. Um, it's a, the top half of the database. Now you do need the other components, uh, for example, the catalog, which is uh, could be AWS Glue or a Hive Meta Store, um, which then maps the uh, the tables, the schemas, tables, and, and the columns within those tables to the objects or the files that actually live in the storage system. And so the catalog is is a very important uh, point uh, that connects the the ecosystem. Increasingly, there's transaction managers or table formats that are being used as well. Uh, and together, they uh, uh, you know kind of form a, a database. I call it the the deconstructed database where each of these parts are you know, in a traditional data warehouse, they were all part of a single integrated system, but with Presto and in the data lake world, um, they are there are many different components that together um, create um, an open source data warehouse. Uh, Presto came out of the Hadoop ecosystem, so in some ways um, it, is, um, uh, it, it is related, it is uh, it uses the Hive Meta Store, and that was the first catalog that was supported. Uh, but uh, today, AWS Glue is also supported, uh, also, but, but it's also HFS compatible. Uh, and it is uh, you can um, uh, query uh, file storage like HDFS um, uh, underneath the covers. But um, unlike the Hadoop ecosystem, which was extremely complex, Presto is fairly um, uh, self-sufficient. And uh, and so, along with uh, Presto, once you have the catalog and um, uh, you, you really don't need any of the other pieces of Hadoop uh, to be installed on the system. Uh, how is the data different from a data warehouse? Now, data warehouses are tightly coupled systems where uh, storage and compute are all co-located together. They typically are proprietary, proprietary formats um, also end up being very expensive. Presto is a um, great engine because it allows you to query S3 in place, query data leaks in place. You don't have to move your data to another source and uh, to another um, system. And so in that, it is different from a data warehouse. It also becomes cost efficient because as you have lar large amounts of data, uh, some of the object stores are, they are uh, extremely cheap and ubiqu ubiquitous and allow for you to query and manage large, am large amounts of data. So um, what has made Presto different? You know, Presto is a, a, has a highly scalable architecture. Uh, it's ex extremely pluggable. We talked a little bit about this uh, and is extremely performant. So uh, let's, uh, let's take a look at each of these areas. So the first one is the architecture. Um, in Presto, there are two roles, a uh, server or a node has two roles. You have a coordinator uh, as well as uh, the workers. The coordinator is responsible for, uh, it takes in the queries, right? So the clients essentially connect to the coordinator node uh, and um, uh, it is responsible for uh, parsing the query, uh, 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 creates the ASTs um, and um, comes up with the, the optimizer as part of it as well. Um, the the plan gets created, the logical plan gets created, and then at that point, uh, this plan gets um, uh, sent over to the workers, um, gets converted into the physical plan, uh, the splits, the parts of the pieces of the data get split across all these workers, and then the workers go and talk to the data sources underneath. It could be an S3 bucket, it could be a, uh, could be a, a MySQL or a, a relational database um, underneath. Now, uh, Presto is highly scalable, can uh, uh, scale up to a thousand, thousand workers. And today, um, uh, uh, wh while you see a single coordinator here, uh, Presto has in introduced uh, in alpha multiple coordinators. This is going to make it even more scalable uh, from a, a scale perspective, uh, but also uh, would help, uh, helps from a, a high availability perspective. So let's take a, a one more kind of deeper look underneath. So here you have um, the Presto CLI, uh, the clients essentially. Uh, these can be BI tools, it can be um, uh, notebooks um, or uh, other clients like JDBC, ODBC. 
Uh, they send the SQL query to the, the coordinator node. As I was mentioning earlier, the coordinator itself has the parser, the analyzer, um, the planner, uh, it's the optimizer, um, and then the scheduler, which actually schedules out these queries. Now, the coordinator also needs access to the schema and uh, the table definitions, for example. So that's the met metadata API. The metadata API gets called to um, uh, go look up the HMS or GLUE um, uh, system and the information about the table, the, the schemas, uh, columns, uh, statistics, if available, uh, get pulled in. And, um, uh, and then this gets used by the, the analyzer and the planner uh, to, um, to actually come up with a logical plan. Once the logical plan is created, uh, uh, schedule, the scheduler queues it up, they queues up the queries, uh, and also um, uh, uh, splits it up into um, different parts depending on where the data is actually located. And that calls the, uh, the data location API, which can look up uh, uh, where this where data is located, what buckets, what folders, and those then get assigned to all the workers. Uh, now the workers uh, go and pull this information from the underlying data sources, uh, could be a data lake or database. Uh, and once the data gets pulled in, you might have, um, in some cases, you might have a predicate push down where the predicate gets pushed all the way down where it's reading the information so it can skip certain parts of the file if it's, if it's not relevant, for example. Uh, in some cases, depending on what the plan uh, looks like, you might have a shuffle across these workers. And this is where uh, data actually exchanges, um, you know, get, moves around from one worker to another uh, for the additional processing. It's, um, sometimes it happens in the case of a broadcast join, for example. Now, once the data is processed, this gets sent back to the coordinator, the results, and then the result sets are returned back to the, um, uh, uh, to the, uh, the client. The next um, piece in terms of how Presto is different is it's extremely pluggable um, and uh, has comes with a range of different uh, connectors. It's very easy uh, to build um, uh, connectors for Presto because there is a it has a nice API. It's called the SPI that you can build uh, for pl plugins as well as for connectors. And uh, as you see here, um, these are some of the popular connectors. You can connect to a range of different data sources uh, and query uh, this information in. You can also join across different data sources. Now, um, the the Presto connector uh, model itself. So you have a, you know you have a driver for each data source. So for example, for HDFS and S3, uh, you actually have the Hive connector. It's a kind of a confusingly named Hive connector. Uh, it's better uh, would have been better called the Data Lake connector uh, uh, today. Uh, but uh, the 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 Hive connector essentially allows you to connect to HDFS or file systems essentially, uh, as well as S3 compatible stores. So um, uh, there's, that's that's uh, uh, the most popular connector, which tends to be the workhorse for Presto. There's a range of other, other connectors as well that are popular that you can try out. Now, the catalog itself, as I mentioned, includes uh, contains the schemas for the data source that is specified by the connector. Um, and so uh, every connector, you create a catalog.properties file, which has access uh, to the, uh, gives, gives Presto access to the data source um, and has information about the authentication and so on. Uh, and this is our properties, uh, configuration properties that might be needed. Uh, and so that's the, uh, that's considered the, the, the catalog properties uh, file. And uh, there's, there's one needed for every, um, uh, every connector uh, that, that you uh, want to access uh, with Presto. The schemas, um, you um, are uh, namespaces, if you will. They are organized into tables. And tables, like a, a traditional database, are a set of uh, uh, rows organized into columns uh, with, with types. And so um, that's, that's essentially the, the data model uh, that Presto uses. Um, another example here where you see um, a slightly uh, more specific uh, use case. So you have a coordinator node and uh, you have the Hive Metastore, that is the catalog in this case, the operational catalog. You have a, a set of workers which can then connect with uh, the data lakes. So HDFS, um, S3 or uh, GCS. Now, Presto's Hive connector, which is the data lake connector, as I mentioned, supports a range of different types. Um, uh, it includes uh, ORC and Parquet, which tend to be the most uh, performant ones. Um, uh, from the, these are column formats. Uh, these both include some metadata uh, that are part of the file for the file format itself, and th that is what makes it uh, a, a lot more performant. So that Presto, when reading uh, this information, this data, can skip some parts, skip some parts, or skip some segments of the of the file uh, for faster and better performance. Others that are supported are JSON, text, CSV, Avro, others you see here. Um, uh, 
the org or Parquet tend to be the most popular. Um, as an example, uh, Facebook uses ORC, uh, Uber runs on Parquet, and uh, uh, Twitter as well uh, uses uh, Parquet heavily. Uh, and the other ones, uh, JSON, uh, we see quite a bit of uh, a lot of IoT data, uh, event data uh, tends uh, to be JSON. Uh, in some cases, you might want to convert this into Parquet or ORC, depending on the, the performance and the query latencies that you're looking for. At a high level, though, uh, no ingestion is needed. And this is, in this, it's quite different from a data warehouse where um, you don't need to explicitly ingest any data into yet another system. It queries it in place wherever it sits. Now, um, Presto is also very fast. And one of the reasons it is is in memory. Um, uh, the processing is done all in memory and it's, it's streamed into memory. Uh, it's a pipeline architecture, which is uh, different from Spark architecture, which tends to be more stage driven. And at every stage, you are actually um, uh, persisting um, maybe some, some some information. With Presto, it's all streamlined, and uh, and so um, it, that's that's what makes it significantly faster than some of the other general purpose computational engines. Uh, it also has a columnar uh, execution, uh, and that is why the ORC and Parquet formats tend to do much better because for analytics, those tend to be um, uh, much more performant. Uh, for example, you might have aggregates uh, or order by sorts, uh, things like that. Um, and, um, and, and so it, is, uh, uh, it has a columnar approach uh, to execution. Now let's take a quick look at the uh, a query itself, right? So, so here you have an example of a pretty simple query, select star from, uh, um, from orders. And um, you have a simple predicate discount equals zero. Now, uh, what would the, the logical plan look like? So you have the scan, uh, table scan, it goes and scans the orders table, which you see here. Uh, it's, uh, then the, you have the filter, um, which is um, uh, discount equals zero, and then that gets returned in, uh, as an output. Um, here's another query where it's slightly more complicated, where you have an aggregate sum, um, you have a projection, a left join of orders with a line item, and, um, uh, and then you have uh, uh, a predicate as well as a, uh, as a group by. So here, um, you know, it's a sim uh, logical, simple logical plan as well. You have the line item table, uh, which is in the outer, you have the filter, uh, which is the, uh, on, on the discount um, uh, column. Uh, and then the, you have a left outer join with a scan on the orders. And then there's an aggregate, which then gets uh, pushed to the output. So in some ways, it's very similar to a database. Um, and uh, uh, if, you know, if you're familiar with uh, uh, plans, uh, explain plans out of from databases, uh, then it is, uh, these, these would look uh, similar to that. Uh, next, let's take, talk about uh, some of the use cases that Presto supports uh, before we uh, have Tim talk about the roadmap. So uh, Presto was built for the interactive uh, query use cases. Uh, reporting and dashboarding and data science tend to be the most popular use cases. Um, uh, and uh, this is with uh, you know, Tableau or a looker on top, um, uh, and as, as well as uh, a federated access tends to be interactive as well, where you want to uh, uh, query data from different range of data sources, either from an app for, a, for an access perspective uh, or, for a, uh, or for joins. Uh, and then there's a couple of emergent use cases uh, that are becoming um, uh, slowly get, getting adopted. And you have the data lake house use case where you have transaction managers like uh, Hoodie or Delta Lake uh, that are coming up, uh, as well as transformation use cases. Uh, the transformation use cases tend to be in data lake transformations um, using, um, uh, and, and now Presto actually supports uh, uh, Spark execution engine underneath. And it's, uh, Presto on Spark feature that you can use to actually run the ANSI SQL with Presto, but actually have the Spark engine run your uh, transformations uh, underneath. So let's take a little bit of a deeper dive uh, into some of these use cases and see what the stack uh, looks like. So here uh, you have um, uh, you know two different um, stacks, if you will. In one, you have Tableau. You typically have the JDBC, ODBC driver on top, uh, and you have uh, uh, the Presto cluster, uh, in this case, you have the Hive Metastore, uh, and your data sources may be RDS um, and MySQL. And, um, and then you have, um, uh, uh, here you have Looker as another example of a reporting tool, uh, and you have the Glue Metastore. So Presto allows you to uh, connect to it, um, different, um, different types of uh, 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 catalogs, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, and so these tend to be the more popular stacks from uh, interactive reporting and dashboarding. Uh, perspective. 
Next is data science. So for data science, uh, typically I've seen um, you know Jupyter being widely used. So you have uh, Python notebooks, essentially SQL notebooks that that uh, that are running uh, on top. A data scientist might run. Data science science team might run. Uh, again, you have the JDBC driver, uh, and then you have the uh, the S3 data lake um, underneath it um, with either Glue or um, Hive Meta Store. Now for the federated use case, essentially uh, you have a similar stack but you can have a range of different connectors underneath and you can perform joins across these tables. So you might have some data in MySQL, you might have some data in Redshift, you might have some data in S3, and you can perform a join across these three systems uh, where um, uh, the Presto will essentially go and pull the tables that are in MySQL, uh, pull the tables that are in Redshift as well as in S3, uh, and then uh, perform the join in memory. Um, uh, in the um, in the in the workers, then return the results back to the coordinator as we looked at earlier. Uh, here is a look at the transformation uh, stack, and uh, uh, we see there's different kind of simple transformations. Um, uh, some of some of this uh, uh, tends to be more um, uh, of the CTA, so create table as uh, is a is a popular one where you might want to change the format. Of, of, uh, of the data from one, one format to another, let's say JSON to Parquet, and create another derived table or create another copy of the table uh, in a different format. Um, we've also seen just simple select statements that to pull data from one place uh, and then in, uh, insert it into another place, insert it into a, a, a different location, uh, into S3, for example. Uh, and uh, these simple workloads, simple SQL transformation workloads can run quite effectively um, uh, using Presto. Uh, now, we have also seen a Presto on Spark that, that can be used for this. And so if they're longer running queries, longer running transformation jobs, longer running bad jobs, then Spark is the better engine for that. And so the Presto on Spark feature can be used, uh, would be a better fit. Uh, and then finally, from a use case perspective, we have the data lake use case that is getting um, to be more popular. You have, um, uh, here are the, the, you know, the difference is from what we've seen earlier, uh, you have a new layer in between. So in between the Presto cluster and, uh, uh, and S3. So uh, transaction managers are also called table formats, um, are uh, allow for uh, mutations to be performed on data lakes. Now, this is quite different because uh, typically S3 uh, objects uh, is what are stored in S3, and these are immutable. And so with transaction managers, you can now version the data. You can actually uh, have, um, uh, 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 have a delta or you know, versions for the schema itself, where you might add a column and you have versions of uh, different schemas. Uh, but you could have obviously versions of the rows uh, as well. Uh, and, uh, and Presto has a very uh, good inter in integration uh, with um, uh, Apache Hoodie. Uh, this uh, Presto Plus Hoodie stack is, is what runs at Uber. Uh, and is used uh, widely um, uh, across across the company. Uh, Delta Lake uh, uh, and Presto and Delta Lake also have an integration, and there's more work that's being done here to actually build an even tighter native integration with the Delta Reader and Writer. Um, and then uh, Lake Formation is uh, something that is emerging as well. Uh, there's early ac uh, early preview of uh, uh, transactions that's uh, that's that's coming up. Uh, that's uh, that's available. Uh, you, you can take a look at some of their blogs, uh, and this is something that's uh, that's a work in progress for Presto. So with the, this. Um, um, more and more data warehouse workloads can be run on the data lake. And uh, over the next few years, we'll start seeing adoption uh, of this stack uh, quite widely. Um, just to give you an idea of uh, you know, where Presto sits with some of the other query engines, as you look at options in building your data platform, um, there's a few different uh, options out there. Uh, so, you know, Drill, for example, uh, Apache Drill was based on the Dremel paper that came out of Google, um, and then uh, Presto was uh, created about the same time um, at, at Facebook and open source. But you see the, the tremendous growth of Presto um, as the cloud data stores, uh, as the uh, adoption of the cloud data stores in, increased over the last few years. Um, and um, uh, more options, more and more managed service options, more cloud options of Presto were available. The uh, the adoption of it uh, has increased. This is uh, DB engines. It is a ranking that is uh, uh, that's uh, uh, that's been it's it's quite popular. They track a range of different relational databases, uh, and then you also see Spark SQL, right? So Spark continues to be used quite widely for transformations, um, and uh, Presto seems to uh, be you know catching up uh, quite a bit. Uh, so what we are seeing is 
from an interactive query perspective, from an ad hoc query perspective, Presto is turning out to be the, the, the de facto query engine for the for data lakes. Um, and um, uh, and we're very excited about uh, the, mem the momentum and the, the, the second half roadmap, all the features that are that are being added into Presto and it'll continue to get better, uh, faster uh, and easier to use. Uh, a quick note about Ahana. Um, so I've uh, I created Ahana as a managed service for Presto. Uh, Ahana is uh, a part of the Linux Foundation and the Presto Foundation, uh, and uh, we've made it really easy to um, use Presto with a single pane of glass. We bring compute and Presto into your environment in AWS, um, and so we use uh, uh, the cross-account access and an NVPC approach, uh, so that the data and the compute never. Uh, are um, uh, come into the, the vendor's environment. Uh, unlike a data warehouse, you don't have to ingest anything in. Uh, Ahana uh, and Presto clusters that, that you can bring up can query the data directly in place uh, wherever it sits. So uh, uh, so that's Ahana at a glance. We've uh, gotten a, a few uh, awards and some um, uh, good acclaim um, uh, over the last year. And uh, with that, I'm going to pass it over to Tim. Uh, Tim is going to talk about uh, Presto for All, the, uh, uh, the roadmap, as well as a deeper dive in some of the use cases. Thanks, everyone. Tim, over to you. Thank you, Deepti. So you've learned about the history of Presto and what makes it unique. Uh, next, I'd like to talk about the technical improvements we're making to Presto to make it an even better platform for analytics. And it can be summed up simply as Presto for All. Presto works really well as an interactive query engine. It can unify various data sources in your warehouse and provide a consistent interface into the data. We want to make the experience effortless going into many other use cases so that you have a one-stop shop with a single language for most needs, uh, analytical needs in your uh, data warehouse. One such use case is reporting and dashboarding. We want Presto to be the default choice for dashboards and to effortlessly handle the volume and query shapes these tools send to Presto. Um, think uh, BI tools, um, think uh, you know things that are sort of generated on the fly programmatically uh, that may be challenging for uh, databases. We want to extend our support and make this uh, even more seamless and even more reliable. Presto is already a great choice for interactive and ad hoc analytics. Uh, we want to make it even better. We want to improve the reliability. We want to improve the um, uh, ease of use for this use case uh, even further. Uh, high QPS use cases. We want Presto to be able to efficiently serve data without having to ETL it into your, from your warehouse. Um, so we want Presto to be able to handle very high QPS external serving requests efficiently and with minimal ETL to other storage solutions. And without a different language um, that another storage solution may have. We want, we want you to use the same Presto SQL that you use um, for dashboarding, that you use for uh, ad hoc analytics, uh, for also um, these, these types of use cases as well serving types of use cases. And finally, at the totally opposite end of the spectrum, we want Presto to be able to handle large workloads with ease. What I mean by large workloads is uh, long running workloads could be, you know, tens of minutes to several hours, um, ETL type of workloads. So um, create table as selects, select in, insert into, um, ETL or um, uh, transformation type of uh, use cases. This, depending on the query shape, is currently challenging because Presto is an in-memory query engine. And depending on uh, the size of the data or the type of joins required, it may run into local memory limits. But as I'll be describing, we're constantly improving this and have um, some exciting improvements uh, to make this use case in particular uh, much easier for Presto users. And the most important thing is that we want to consolidate on the same language to do all of this with a similar ETL and a unified storage backend. 
the more tools that you need to support these use cases, the more complicated and expensive it gets for uh, operating them in the warehouse and all the different sorts of expertise required to maintain them. We want Presto to work very well across all of these use cases so that you don't have to reach for a different tool or a different solution. You can use your same familiar Presto SQL with its semantics and its performance characteristics across all of these use cases without you needing a different tool to support uh, these other use cases. Um, so then the big question is, what are we doing to help uh, scale Presto to fit these, use, uh, these different workloads to support them well? Uh, and one very obvious thing is uh, we're continuing to add more connectors. Uh, DeepT explained the connector architecture and why it's so critical to Presto. Uh, obviously, we're adding more. And we're also improving the support for these connectors in various different ways, such as improved filter pushdown, uh, additional file format support, um, and also adding new connectors in particular um, for Alibaba, uh, 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 Alibaba connectors as well. Um, and this list is not exhaustive. Uh, we have a public roadmap that uh, I would uh, definitely uh, encourage you to check out and uh, give it a read um, since there's uh, a lot of exciting features coming down the road. So next we have workloads that don't fit within Presto's memory limits. Um, in particular, this tends to be uh, batch ETL type of workloads. Um, uh, but it could also be, uh, you know, sort of ad hoc analytical use cases that require complex joins uh, or large aggregations. Um, these uh, may hit Presto lim memory limits. Um, and every time uh, a memory limit is hit, um, it requires intervention from the user and uh, requires time from the user to uh, make this work better. So we've really put a lot of effort into adding more operators uh, to participate in spilling to help overcome this limitation. Um, so in addition to adding support for join, windowing functions, order by an aggregation, uh, and improving the reliability of the spilling operators, we've also added more spilling strategies. Uh, so uh, you can pick and choose the strategy that is um, relevant for your cluster and your reliability needs uh, rather than using a single default. And we've also added plugin support for external spilling. So in case storage is limited in your particular setup or you don't have um, good reliable storage, a fast external storage service could be used um, uh, for spilling this intermediate data um, so long as the plugin is supplied. So then next we have um, workloads that span many tens of minutes or even hours. Uh, the ultimate goal that we have for this, these workloads is to prevent the need for rewriting the query in a different engine, which may have different semantics, different support for functions, have its own learning curve, um, require uh, essentially learning it from scratch. We don't want you to start from scratch in case you hit some sort of batch ETL type of work ca work, uh, use case we want you to use the same Presto SQL that you're familiar with uh, for all these other use cases for this one as well. So that's why Presto has migrated its entire engine uh, to a library that can run inside Spark. Um, by leveraging Spark's resource management, uh, we can now enjoy the benefits of disaggregate shuffle and recoverability uh, that Spark gives you without having to rewrite the query plan uh, without having to rewrite the query that ran on Presto Classic. So an example is a query that, let's say, used to run fine on Classic, but now suddenly has hit memory limits, or it takes much longer to complete because of an influx of data um, that causes the query that used to run, run fine to hit local memory limits, let's say, building a hash table for aggregation or join. Such queries uh, can now be reliably executed uh, on Spark without having to rewrite the query. 
you can leverage Spark's execution model uh, to partition the data much in a much finer uh, manner by, by giving it much larger parallelism. And in case there is a reliability issue, uh, you can leverage Spark's recoverability features to uh, do a partial failure recovery without having to rerun the entire query. So we're very excited about that feature. And finally, at the opposite end of the spectrum, we have Presto being used for um, online analytics or something that may be customer driven, something that has strict latency requirements and strict reliability requirements. We want to say, use the same query engine here as well. Uh, once again, we want to prevent the need from having to reach for a different tool uh, you know, to handle uh, these other use cases. We want to use the same Presto uh, query engine for, uh, for all of this. And we've put a lot of in, uh, improvements into Presto's caching architecture. Uh, Raptor X with caching um, has, uh, uh, is fully implemented and offers a hierarchical data cache uh, in Presto from uh, a data cache um, reading the bytes uh, at the scan stage to a cache uh, accessing the metadata from the Metastore um, to a cache of the partial uh, plan, uh, the partial fragment um, of the data. In case of selective queries, um, you just need to read the the partial um, the partial um, fragment rather than the having to reread all of the files all over again. So we have several layers of caching. Uh, that tend to give us a pretty big performance wins uh, up to 10 times, uh, depending on the, work, the workload. And we've also put a lot of investment into materialized views, which offer uh, better performance against uh, roll-up tables, um, could involve some uh, complex, um, uh, you know, like uh, pre-aggregated data that you would like to use for a dashboarding use case. Materialized views can support this without you having to uh, manually create an intermediate table uh, to serve the results. Materialized views can be defined to seamlessly uh, define the uh, pre-aggregation that you would like to, to run on top of the data. So we've talked about a lot of the enhancements that we've done, um, and now I would like to talk about the future. Where do we want to take Presto going into the, the future? Uh, and I call this Presto++. Plus Plus. So we want to make um, Presto even more efficient, even more reliable, and even more scalable. So what are we doing to improve the reliability of Presto? Uh, the first step is uh, disaggregate coordinators in Presto. We now have um, support and uh, to run the Presto coordinator across multiple processes, which gives better isolation um, and uh, the ability to handle larger cluster sizes than is possible on a single coordinator. Um, and it also helps, it's also very helpful for high, high QPS use cases where uh, the Presto coordinator may be bottlenecked. Uh, we now have a means to horizontally scale the coordinator itself uh, to handle um, all sorts of uh, different uh, problems that you might experience with uh, a single coordinator, including um, single point of failure and uh, loss of availability. Uh, we're also working on uh, improving Presto's uh, task scheduling to take into account the current memory and CPU um, uh, distribution in the cluster. The idea here is um, as Presto schedules tasks uh, to uh, pick estimates for uh, how, how the ta task will cost and to pick the least utilized nodes. The idea here is to have a better quality and spread across all of the nodes uh, so that we are less likely to run into local ooms um, and have better, uh, can support more throughput um, by more evenly uh, placing a uh, workload across all of the nodes in a cluster. We've also added, we're also adding the ability to uh, 
add to client-side retries. Uh, so in case the uh, Presto query um, encounters some intermediate reliability issue uh, and no results have been sent to the client, the query can simply be retried uh, transparently without intervention from the client. In terms of efficiency, um, <clears throat> We are working on a very large project to uh, add a native accelerator to Presto uh, for heavily used connectors. Uh, so think, for example, the Hive connector, um, which is extremely heavily used. Um, this may have a native accelerator that supports a very efficient uh, uh, ORC reader written in native C++ that supports vectorized uh, execution and full filter push down uh, into the scan stage uh, to allow for efficient pruning of, uh, of, of data uh, before it you know, ends up being shuffled uh, to downstream stages. That's not all. Um, the Presto eval is being rewritten uh, entirely. So this means uh, join algorithms and uh, hash aggregation uh, and um, uh, all these up other operators are being uh, rewritten in a native manner to support uh, vectorized execution uh, on the local um, on the local worker. Uh, we plan to have a uh, an update to share on this later this year, uh, but the early results are extremely promising in terms of uh, performance efficiency improvements. Um, in addition, on the Java eval side. Uh, we're continuing to invest in improvements on uh, ARIA scan, which is our uh, Presto's uh, filter pushdown support. ARIA, ARIA scan has uh, already pretty good support on the ORC format. Uh, we're bridging the gap and bringing all those enhancements to the Parquet format as well. So I've talked about reliability and efficiency. Next up, let's talk about how uh, we're making Presto uh, more extensible. The first is we're adding, we've added support for uh, SQL functions. Um, so rather than, so suppose um, you have a complex expression or a complex function um, uh, that you uh, would like to share with your colleagues or would like to encapsulate it because it's very verbose and very ugly. Uh, we now have the ability to define SQL expressions uh, in pure SQL and simply invoke it as a function um, uh, so that it could be shared among colleagues, um, checked in, or um, you know, saved for later use. Um, and in addition to SQL functions, we now have also support for external UDF servers. <coughs> and the idea for external UDF servers is um, it could be that you have a particular function that um, is written in, let's say, C++ or some other native language. It's now easy to support this by simply uh, implementing a Thrift interface that Presto can talk to uh, and can uh, remotely execute uh, these SQL functions um, by executing uh, code on these Thrift servers. It's also a good way to sort of allow authoring and custom UDFs uh, to customers without having to, um, without having to add it to the Presto core code base. Um, so this opens up the possibility of dynamic functions and uh, loading them up dynamically on UDF server without having to integrate into the core engine. So it really makes um, the UDF authoring experience a lot more flexible. So I've talked a lot about um, Presto's uh, technical direction and many of the projects that Presto um, is working on to make Presto even faster, even more reliable, and even more extensible. Um, you may want to get involved, and I we would love to have you. Um, if there is, uh, if you have a question about how to operate Presto, or if you you know, sort of like want to get started, you know, chatting on how you can contribute to Presto. Um, PrestoDB.slack.com. Uh, join the Slack group and uh, um, uh, let us know what your questions are.
Um, there's also a blog post. Um, we, we have a, a blog. Um, if you have a particular use case that you would like to showcase with Presto, we would love to see it. We also have regular meetups with Presto where people present different initiatives or uh, different uh, use cases that you're, they're using Presto. And finally, um, <clears throat> we would love to see code contributions. So if you have uh, an idea for a connector, let's say, uh, new functions, improving documentation, um, you know, uh, contributing to the, even the core engine or, or contributing to code reviews, uh, all such contributions are welcome and uh, we'd love to see all of that. And that's all I had for my slides. Um, I would uh, thank you all for uh, attending this presentation and I would love to see if you have any questions.